This is a learning in 10 minute review of Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. My name is Sarah Plummer, and I'm a Duke Pediatric Cardiology Fellow. The learning objectives for this presentation are for the viewers to understand that Wolf Parkinson White syndrome is a predisposition to a tachyarrhythmia secondary to the presence of an accessory pathway. We'd like the viewers to be able to recognize the classic ECG findings that are characteristic of WPW, as well as understand the pathophysiology of the type of supraventricular tachycardia that is associated with WPW. We'd like you to be able to understand why patients with WPW are at risk for sudden death, as well as have a basic understanding of the presentation, workup, and management of patients with WPW. We'll briefly go over a little bit of background about WPW and talk about the definition of the syndrome. We'll go over classic ECG findings and the pathophysiology of the disease. We'll talk about the etiology and the epidemiology, and we'll then go over the prognosis and the presentation, and then briefly talk about the workup and the treatment. Wolf Parkinson and White first described Wolf Parkinson White Syndrome, or WPW, in 1930. They published a case series of young patients with a short PR interval on ECG and episodes of tachycardia. The WPW eponym was first coined in 1940. WPW is a congenital anomaly of abnormal conduction tissue, often called an accessory pathway, that exists between the atria and the ventricles. The presence of this accessory pathway predisposes patients with WPW to episodes of supraventricular tachycardia, or SVT. It has been recognized that WPW syndrome involves pre-excitation or early activation of the ventricles when the patient is in normal sinus rhythm. The classic ECG findings of WPW syndrome involve a short PR interval and a wide QRS complex with a slurred onset. This slurred onset is known as a delta wave. Both of these findings are a result of pre-excitation of the ventricles via the accessory pathway. There are also subsequent ST and T wave changes secondary to abnormal repolarization of the ventricles. The pathophysiology of abnormal conduction in WPW is now well understood. The accessory pathway is an anomalous electrical connection between the atrium and the ventricles. It allows for electrical conduction between the atria and the ventricles at a site other than the AV node. This causes pre-excitation of the ventricles during normal sinus rhythm. More importantly, the presence of this abnormal conduction connection between the atria and the ventricles predisposes the heart to arrhythmias. Arrhythmias can occur when a normal impulse from the atria is conducted through the AV node to the ventricles and abnormally travels up to the atria from the ventricles through the accessory pathway. This activates the atria before the sinus node has a chance to fire the next normal sinus beat. The electrical impulse can then continue to travel in this reentry circuit, causing a very fast and regular tachycardia, known as SVT. It is thought that WPW may have a genetic component, as 3.4% of patients with WPW have a first-degree relative with pre-excitation. It is associated with several both cardiac and non-cardiac disorders, including tuberous sclerosis, glycogen storage diseases, and atrial septal defects. It is very common in patients with Epstein's anomaly of the tricuspid valve and corrected transposition of the great arteries. WPW is relatively common with a prevalence of 1 to 3 per 1,000 individuals. It is more common in males. Most patients with WPW have otherwise normal hearts. There are two peaks of WPW presentation, one in infancy and one in adolescence, making this primarily a pediatric disease. It should be noted that in asymptomatic patients, conduction across the accessory pathway can disappear as they get older. This is most common in those patients that present in infancy, and approximately one quarter of these patients will lose abnormal conduction when followed over 10 years. Mortality in WPW is rare, but it does occur. In symptomatic patients, there is a rate of sudden cardiac death of 1 in 100 cases over 15 years. The rate of sudden death is lower in asymptomatic patients, but still remains higher than in the general population. Unfortunately, sudden death is the initial presentation of WPW syndrome in as many as 4.5% of patients. 
Patients are at increased risk of sudden death if they have multiple accessory pathways, short refractory periods of the accessory pathway, atrial fibrillation or flutter, and a family history of premature sudden death. It should be noted that sudden cardiac death in patients with WPW is not secondary to the supraventricular tachycardia. SVT is fast, but typically not so fast that it causes hemodynamic instability. Sudden death in WPW is instead caused by the rapid conduction of atrial fibrillation impulses to the ventricles through this accessory pathway. This can lead to ventricular fibrillation and death. Thus, the risk of sudden death increases in patients with WPW as they age, and atrial fibrillation becomes more likely. Presenting signs and symptoms of WPW can vary significantly from patient to patient. Symptomatic patients often present with chest discomfort, palpitations, lightheadedness, or frank syncope. Infants can present with irritability and difficulty feeding. The diagnosis can also be made by the incidental finding of pre-excitation on an ECG. A patient with WPW who is not in an abnormal rhythm will not have any specific exam findings. If there is associated congenital heart disease, there may be exam findings consistent with structural heart disease. During an episode of SVT, patients may be diaphoretic, pale, cool, and hypotensive. If the SVT has been untreated for many hours, heart failure signs and symptoms can develop. The diagnosis of WPW is made by the presence of pre-excitation, a delta wave, on 12-lead ECG. Once the diagnosis is made, an echocardiogram should be performed to evaluate for heart function and for the presence of an associated congenital heart defect. The pattern of delta wave on a 12-lead EKG can hint at the location of the accessory pathway. Continuous ECG monitoring or Holter monitoring, either in the hospital or at home, can help evaluate for the presence of associated tachyarrhythmias. An intracardiac electrophysiology study where arrhythmia is induced can help pinpoint the location of the accessory pathway. There is a risk stratification process that tries to identify those patients with WPW who are at greatest risk for sudden cardiac death. Patients at risk can be offered curative therapy with ablation of the accessory pathway. This therapy has a high success rate and a low complication rate, although it can be noted that damage to the AV node during the process can cause complete heart block, making the patient pacemaker dependent. There is also a role for medical therapy in WPW. Antiarrhythmia medications can work to change the conduction properties of the AV node, the myocardial tissue itself, or the accessory pathway, with the goal of preventing the perpetuation of an abnormal rhythm when it does occur, and it can also reduce the ventricular response to atrial fibrillation. In summary, WPW is a predisposition to supraventricular tachycardia, secondary to the presence of an accessory pathway. Evidence of pre-excitation is seen on ECG by the presence of a delta wave. Patients with WPW are at increased risk for sudden death, and thus ablation is typically the treatment of choice as it is curative and low risk.